So welcome everybody. Um, I am excited for the community and for the, uh, the members who are participating in this program to come together for our Kwanzaa celebration uh, um, on Zoom because we can't be together physically doesn't mean that we couldn't do this together anyway. So I just wanna say a big thank you and welcome to our program. I'd like to uh, make a few, um, say a few thank yous to um, people who have joined us. I want to first and foremost acknowledge we have some elected officials who have not counted robbery to be here with us today. Um, our county executive, George Latimer, is with us. George, if you could make sure you're still here with us. I, I am, and it's a, an honor to be with you today, Omira. Thank you for joining us. I'm not sure if our county legislator has already joined. Damon Marr, you're here, Damon. Just give us a little shout out and a hello. Okay, he'll join us if he hasn't. I know our mayor, Greg Luisi, will also be joining us. Greg, are you with us yet? Okay, and our trustees in the village, uh, Renee Howell. Renee, have you joined in? Trustee Gina Lee. Hi, everybody. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. Thanks for joining us. Trustee Lee, and also Trustee Danny Lang, if he's with us, if he would say hello. Okay, so I also want to just give a big thank you. Um, we've, we've worked on putting this together in a short time frame, and we had many hands that have helped. So I want to thank those people. Um, I want to thank Patience Rojas Taylor, who was a, an instrumental in putting this program together, as well as Captain Savage. Adrian Stiles, Courtney Sanison, Cynthia Gallishore. A special thank you to Karen Stowe Stiles, Minister Karen Stowe Stiles, who will also be a part of the program. Um, and all of those who have decided that it, it was worth their time to come and share the principles and some insight that they might be able to impart to the rest of us. So thank you very much. I'd like to allow uh, Minister Karen Stiles to begin with libation and the intro. Uh, Minister Karen Stiles, so Stiles is a student of African history and interfaith minister and the daughter of Reverend Ed, Edward M. Stowe, who is a reverend at the Shiloh Baptist Church, and his wife, Shirley Stowe. So, Minister So Stiles. Can you raise your hand if you can hear me? We can hear you. Oh, hi, everybody. Oh, Myra, thanks so much for the opportunity and this certainly is a historic mm -hmm. this is a historical event it's the first virtual Kwanzaa directly coming live from Shiloh Baptist Church in Tuckahoe New York Amen. first virtual Kwanzaa inspired by our dear Myra and this is a wonderful thing it's really wonderful it's exciting I'm glad to be a part of it and it's clearly a historical event so what I'm going to do is um, to offer a prayer. So I'm going to invoke the spirit of God for all of us, for everybody within our range. And then I'm going to remember our ancestors upon whose shoulders we stand. So without our ancestors, we can't uh, do anything. We need to remember them, to remember their strength. Oh, and I am remiss. Ms. Lovely Billups is in the house. And so I'm asking my esteemed elder, Lovely Billups, may I have permission from you as an elder to move forward with this program? Permission granted with joy. Oh, thank you. She said she granted permission with joy. That's so beautiful. We take time for a moment of reverence. We call on the all encompassing, all powerful spirit of God to enter into this place, to enter, enter into our minds, to enter into our bodies and in, enter into our spirits. We call on God's powerful ways of healing, his ways of wisdom, his ways of comfort, his ways of sustenance, his ways of inspiration. We give thanks for everything that the almighty spirit has done for us, the things that we know about and the things we don't know about. We all have things that we could say, wow, look at that, God did that for me. But what about the things that he spared us from that we didn't even know? So we call on that kind of energy of God, the one who can do anything, 
the God that can make the seemingly impossible possible, the God that can inspire us to put together this program in spite of social distancing, but he pulled us all together. We're doing the best we can with what we have. Everybody put in a little bit and lent their energy to this joyous and beautiful event. So we give thanks to God for everything that he's done for us, for sustaining us through this pandemic and through some difficult times of social unrest, of people being physically distant from each other. So we're physically distant from each other for health purposes, but we should know and remember God, help us to remember that although we're physically distant, we are never distant from you. Right. you are you looking at right the orange program? And I always okay. say that if we say help, well, God, it's help. two o'clock, but I don't recognize this person is doing it. Any I thought it was a, uh, getting something to eat, get need some help, improving your attitude. And you say help and trust and believe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I certainly help. So we um, ask yeah. that that goes well today. Yeah. Coming in the one who is on it, it too. Doors, yeah. that the door yeah, is open know. to joy. The door is open to beauty. The door oh, is open to wisdom. And we shut the door mm -hmm. with despair or okay. lack feeling like a victim or feeling down and out and downtrodden, we shut the door in that. And we welcome joy, we welcome peace. I'm, we, I'm having a problem hearing today. The heart pieces. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. Everybody um, has calmness on their head. They call in spite of physical appearances. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, call in the spirit of some of our ancestors. And if you can hear me after, uh, we say the names of our ancestors. You could say Ashe um, after I say these ancestors. I have a list here, but feel free after I go through this list, because some people have submitted names, feel free to um, go ahead and say the names of your ancestors. And the purpose of this is that these people had wisdom. They lived lives where they were able to take care of others and to overcome un seemingly unsurmountable obstacles. So as we remember them, we, may we be remembering their strengths and their successes so that if we're doing something, we could call on their energy so we could be successful. Um, in Africa, there is a concept of Sasa and Zumani. So one of them means the past, right? And the other one means the present. So as long as we continue to say people's names, they're gone in body, but they're still present in spirit. So this is what I'm going to do is to go ahead and say the names of my ancestors. And I'd be remiss if I don't start off with my mother, um, Shirley Stowe, who um, was a nurse and she went to this church. So you all can say, Ashe. Thank you. And also what I want to do, since I am standing in Houston uh, Social Hall, I want to call on the spirit and the remembrance of Reverend Charles E. Houston, who was a reverend at this church. He was somebody who contributed to the community. He was somebody who had a lot of wisdom and a lot of love in his heart. And so we remember Charles Houston and Mary P. Houston, his grand first lady. We remember them, we remember their stature, we remember their sense of ethics and morality. So we say Ashe. So the rest of them are going to give a long explanation, but know that they were near and dear to some of you near and dear to this town. And so I will just go ahead and, and say, um, continue names and y'all can say Ashe. Um, Walter and Nellie Yates. Ashe. Mary Elizabeth Savage. Ashe. Jubilee. Ashe. Ashe. Um, Baby Duncan. Ashe. I have to put my glasses on. Um, Catherine and Buddy Savage. Ashe. Ashe. Hicks. Ashe. Ashe. Pauline and Willie Jones. Ashe. Ashe. Dean Piper and William Piper. Ashe. Ashe. That, is, that is the grandparents of Lovely Villas. But I'll go a little bit faster because she explained to me how they, as two Black people in 1936, bought a house on High Street. as the title to that house. Ashe. Ashe. Juan Andrino. Salvador Andino. Ashe. Maria Alvarez. Ashe. And Naomi Strand. Ashe. 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 Ashe.
Ursa Lee Charlie, in our black hairdresser. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Charlie. Yeah. Um, Victor and Idelia Parker. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to be pouring water. Let me be pouring water. This is a libation. You hear your ancestors say, let's have a little libation. So really, it's pouring water while you're doing this. So I'm going to be pouring water. Thank you, Adrian. Okay. So, um, Jesse Hill. Yeah. Edward and Corinthia Jordan. Yeah. Bruce Stowe, Tommy Logan, uh, Lucinda and Willie G, Catherine Brown, George, Ruby, and Elizabeth Simmons Stowe, uh, Rosa Bailey Sr. To the people who are in the room with me, would you, oh, I'm sorry. This just in. Okay. Um, Adrian Styles' mom, Miss Ophelia Macklin Jackson. Ashe. Ashe. Um, Essie Singleton. Gloria Dixon. Ashe. Ashe. Anybody else want to add some names in that I haven't said? Gloria Elliott. Bienvenido Andino. Ashe. Ashe. There's Alma Lee Taylor in the finishment. Ashe. If you'd like to write the name. Jimmy Lamont Franks. Ashe. Ashe. Um, I see Nancy uh, Height is on here, so I'm going to say your mother, uh, my aunt Aris. And Ashe. The Thank you. Thank you so much. And I see my friend Brenda Franks is on here and uh, her car playing mom. So. <laughs> Essie Strother Patterson. Essie Strother Patterson. Uh -huh. Oh, Wesley Norman, our first. Wesley, two of the first black police chiefs, Wesley Norman and Joe Yancey. Sudi Eller. Ashe. Are there any? Robert Elliott. Ashe. Ardu Eller, LaRue Starks, and Terrell Eller. Ashe. Ashe. Betty Jean Purdy. Ashe. Ashe. Molly Beatrice Purdy. Ashe. Jesse Purdy. Ashe. Say it out. Who? Detroit Tyson. Detroit Tyson. Yeah. Albert Tyson. Albert Tyson. Ashe. Ashe. Are there Hansel any? Smith. Who? Hansel Smith. Hansel. Hansel Smith. Ashe. Ashe. Are there any others? Okay. Um. So let's also call on um, some famous people. Harriet Tubman. We call Ashe. Douglas. We call on the spirit of Audrey Lord. Ashe. We call on the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr. Ashe. Um, <clears throat> so we call on those ancestors also, um, for us as African Americans and African Caribbeans that didn't, the, pe the people who didn't jump off the ship. So those people, they are people, and we're able to stand here now because of them. So the purpose in calling on our ancestors is to remember their strengths and remember that they live within us. So when I look in the mirror, I see my grandmother, Lucille Bailey, and she's not gone because she's not gone from my remembrance. So that means, Omira, your people are not gone because they're still in your remembrance. And I say that to all of you, it's but a thin veil. Their spirit lives on and we call on them. We have two more that have been put in the chat bar, Tootie and Herbie Carden. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. There are two more who were called Tootie and Herbie Cardin. Ashe. Ashe. All right, so we pour libation for all of our ancestors, the ones that we haven't mentioned also, and the ones that continue to be an inspiration in our lives, in our minds, in our bodies, and in our spirits. 
And so um, finally, I ask God, I thank God for everything. I thank God for all of the ways that he expresses himself. It's in masculine forms. It's in feminine forms. We thank God for everything, for his power of creativity, the way that blue sky matches the green grass and the color of the earth and the strength of the sea. We thank Mother Earth for sustaining us. We thank God for sustaining us. We thank God particularly for sustaining us through what is a difficult time. So some people have been saying Merry Christmas and mentioning some other holidays. And we realize that sometimes it's difficult um, during a stressful time to be feeling merry, but we can feel satisfied. We can feel satisfied that we're still here and able to take breath. We can feel grateful for everything, whether or not it's counting each finger, your eyes or your ears always find something to be grateful for. And we pray that God opens our minds so that we understand that there is always something to be grateful for. Amen. We are grateful for the lives of the people who have gone on to the heavenly realm. We feel sad, but we still continue to breathe. And we still continue to know that God is watching over us. And all we need to do is say help. So everybody doesn't feel 100% all the time, but thank God if we feel 5%. That's why I said, if you have nothing else to say, thank you. I got one, two, three, four, five fingers on this hand and five on the other. So we pray that we're always grateful and that um, I pray that God blesses everybody who's within the range of my voice and that he empowers you and strengthens you. And is that he is a blessing to you, that you are a blessing to others and that we're all able to do well and to do the best that we can and to be able to rise to the occasion. And we're able to use the principles of, of Kwanzaa. So I'm gonna say Ashe to that prayer. Do y'all say Ashe to my prayer? Ashe. Ashe. Thank you. It's so interesting because I see you on there, but I feel together with everybody. Thank you so much. So what we're doing today with this historical um, Kwanzaa event, the first virtual Kwanzaa, in Tuckahoe, New York. <laughs> so what we're doing with this first virtual Kwanzaa, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Kwanzaa because some people have heard about it, some people haven't heard about it. So <clears throat> Kwanzaa came about in 1966 and um, it was, it was um, created by Dr. Milana Karenga. And so the idea of Kwanzaa, I think it had actually a longest, longer name to it um, in Swahili. Just a minute, and I'm gonna try. <laughs> okay, so in Swahili, I think it was called Kwan, uh, Matunda Ma Kwanza. And so really what it breaks down to is first fruits. So Kwanza takes place at a harvest time when people are able to harvest what they have planted. So the, the idea of Kwanza is about first fruits and um, it's about cultural reaffirmation. So it's always good for us to remember who we are, which is what we do with the ancestors, remember where we came from. And that way we can have an excellent plan so, uh, for where we're going. So the idea of Kwanzaa is about cultural reaffirmation. Um, it's about seven different principles. It's surrounded by seven different principles, which are um, the first one. And also if y'all wanna find more, I brought this one book. This is called uh, Kwanzaa Keepsake, but at this point, it's probably um, a lot more things that you can use. And here's another one. And so we don't have to worry about being perfect because the idea and the intention is for us to reaffirm ourselves, to strengthen ourselves, and to move forward. So the first principle of Kwanzaa, I'm going to describe all of them, and then we're going to have people um, to them separately, but I'll explain to you what they are. So the first one today, can somebody tell me, oh, this is another thing. I'm going to try this. I don't know when, who on here knows it, but a lot of times during Kwanzaa, you have a question, and the question is, Habari Ghani. What is the word? That's what Habari Ghani means. So when you say Habari Ghani, the answer is supposed to be the principle for the day. So can anybody in virtual land or even in this room, if I say Habari Ghani, what's your answer? Umoja. Very good, Umoja. So that would be the answer for today. And Umoja quite simply means, so it's <clears throat> unity within your household, unity within the community, um, and positive unity. 
community and people sticking together. So it's a principle <clears throat> that we think of today, and it would be great if we think of it at all times. The second principle of Barigani. Um, so knows the second principle. It's okay. Excellent. Okay. With the answer, go ahead. Correctly stated and correctly another. <laughs> the second principle is Kuji Chakalia, which means you can name yourself. Nobody else can name you or define you. So in the interest of time, I'm going to always go with those so far. And then we're going to move forward uh, with the people explaining. So the third one is Ujima, which is collective work and responsibility. Just like what we did today. So it was Omira, Cassie, others, uh, Cynthia Gallus. Show up, forgive me if I haven't said all your names, but a lot of people put this together. That was collective work and responsibility. The building that I stand in, Shiloh Baptist, I have the old financial records and I can see inside of those ledgers where people put in 25 cents, a dollar 50. And we're standing in it because of collective responsibility and also another principle, which is cooperative economics, which follows. So that covers both of them. So all of these principles are important. So I'll go to the fifth purpose, which is Nia. And um, that is purpose. It's having a purpose in your life and a purpose to move forward and to move forward in a purposeful way, not just float from here to there, but to have purpose. Um, so then are up to one of my favorites, number six, which is Kuwumba. That's creativity. So you can see behind this, you can't see the whole table, but all of us pitched together and uh, we did something creative. We put some fabric here, put a little instrument there, and we do things that are create creative. And creativity actually is a good antidote to feeling down in the dumps. Go ahead and create something, whether you create some corporate, uh, create a nice uh, uh, little venue in your home, but put something together and use your creativity, the talent that you have, whatever it may be. And so the last one is faith. That's called Imani. So we always have faith. So despite of appearances or even the sense of the unknown, we um, need to have faith and believe that things can change and shift and get better. You know, so we're so grateful for this day and for the opportunity to put this together. Thank you to you all. Thank you to God and thank you to my ancestors upon whose shoulders I stand. And we're going to move forward with the program. Love to all. Thank you so much, Minister Karen. So, Styles, you blessed us. Thank you for opening us up. And so we will, as, as she said, we will have uh, different people in the community who have volunteered to bring forth each of the principles and give some insight and speak to how that principle might affect them and, and how they perceive that, that principle. So the first principle is going to be presented by Amala Howard, and she will be presenting the principle of Umoja. All right, can you hear me? Yes, you can. So um, my kids and I are presenting Umoja. Titus is gonna read what that principle is. Yeah, speak up a little bit. Come up here so they can hear you. Umoja, unity to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. All right. So we're also going to talk about why unity is important to us. Um, as Titus said, why it's important in the family, the community, the nation, and in the race. So for me, unity is important because it helps us as a community build each other up and become better, um, to strive to do better. Um, Titus? I, th I think it's, um, I think unity is important because I, it's, 
important to make a um, good bond with your family and the community. Okay, and Milani also, she wanted to say something about unity. Milani, do you wanna pass? Yeah, okay. Um, unity is particularly important for us because um, as a blended family of both kids that we've had and kids that we've adopted, we felt that it was important to do for our community by bringing in foster children and teaching our children and keeping our children um, together. So that's why as a family, it's important for us also. That's why we, put, we wanted to choose Moja to present. Um, we made a Kenura, a Kenura together. Uh, we couldn't get the materials to build it, but we decided to um, draw one. And Milani is going to light the Moja candle. And that's our presentation on Moja. Thank you. Thank you to the Howard family. So the next, the next principal is the principal of Ujima Collective Work and Responsibility. Um, and the Champlain children will be presenting that. Are they with us? Omara? Yes. Kuki. Kuji Katia is next. It's number two. Oh, sorry. You're absolutely right. I apologize. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> it's Kuji Chagulia, self determination, and Cassie Savage will be presenting that. Exactly. Kuji Chagulia. Can you guys see me okay? We can. A little bit. How's that? We can see you fine. You're going to light the. Um, um, as Cassie is preparing, I just want to encourage everyone, you know, the good thing about doing this virtually is that you can share thoughts, insights, you know, anything that's said that moves you in the chat bar, if you want to send a message that everyone can, can partake in. So please do, feel free to do that. Okay, so um, good afternoon. Thank you, Omara. Good afternoon. If there's anyone who came on late or doesn't know, my name is Cassie Savage. And I bring you greetings from Covenant Life Christian Ministry, where John F. Savage is my pastor, and my first lady is Norma Jean Savage. Um, as we light the, you know, it's done. Okay, so I just want to read you this. As we light the red candle for Kuji Gagulia, symbolizing the fight to persevere as we work hard to overcome discrimination and adversity in our day to day lives. Amen. Amen. Ashe. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So um, bear with me. Um, as I think of um, as I think of this third uh, Kwanzaa uh, candle lighting, it, it means um, self determination. Okay. So uh, first of all, when you think of self-determination, there's two words there. And the first one is self. So it, it's self-determination, which means it's going to mean something different to everyone. Your self-determination, your, your goals, your wants, your to-dos are not going to be mine. God made us all different. Okay, so everyone is going to have their own um, self-determination. When I think about it, I think about... I, I ask myself, what is, what is my passion? What is it that I write down that I want to do? What is it that's burning inside of you, okay, that you keep thinking about that you want to do in life, okay? Um, I'll share a secret with you. One of the things that's burning inside of me, and just a few know, is going back to school. So that's my first self-determination. And God willing, uh, January 11th, I will uh, start uh, this process. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, the second thing, lastly, I just want to leave one thing with you. And that is, as I said, this is different. 
for everybody. Don't listen to the naysayers when you say what you want to do because it's yours. Own yours. Okay, it's yours. Stand up and own what you want to do. If it's something inside of you burning um, desire that you want to accomplish, do, uh, say, whatever it is. Okay, God, again, God made us all different. Okay, in each one of us, he has different plans for each one of us. And how do I know that? Because if you read the book in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you. Amen. Says the Lord, plans of hope and not of evil to give yes. you and hope. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much, Kat. Say that again. I turn it back over to you, darling. Thank you very much for blessing us with that. The next principle, as I already stated before, in the wrong order, is Ujima. And Ujima means collective work and responsibility. And the Champlain children will be presenting that. Um, can you tip this up a little bit, please? Um, just, tip it, just tip it back so they can see. Yeah, what am I? Hello, everyone. Hello. Say your name. Oh. I'm Sean. Ephraim. Hi, Ephraim. What are you doing? I've been doing Ujima. Ujima? Ujima, collective work and responsibility to build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters from our problems matter. Matter. To build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters problems our problems and to solve them together. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You did it. Great job. Thanks so much. Amen. Thank you for the children are willing to come forward and share with us. The next principle is the principle Uja'ama, Cooperative Economics. And we have a recording from Patience Rojas Taylor, who will share this principle with us. You just bear with me. I will try to figure this out. Us all, and that no one person's wealth should elevate them to a status or position that allows them to exploit or oppress others with it. A core tenet of Ujamaa is generosity and sharing, and social wealth cannot fully or easily be built without it. It is well known, especially these days, how much the generosity of successful members of the community can sustain other less fortunate community members who would go without even basic necessities, or worse, be exploited in the search for a means to get ahead. Ujamaa is about looking out for each other. Cooperative efforts of many kinds among our people date all the way back to the time of slavery. Enslaved people kept and tended their own gardens, working these plots on Sundays, their one day off from forced labor, sharing the harvested produce with each other. Of course, skills were shared as well, even in secret, such as the ability to read and write, which we know was forbidden under the system of slavery. Ujamaa was central to the development of Tanzania in the years after winning independence from the British Empire. One example is the collective farming of village-owned plots of land where cotton was grown as a cash crop, an ideal promoted by President Julius Nyerere. Villagers were paid based on how many hours they spent in the fields sowing and harvesting the plant. W.E.B. Du Bois advanced community-owned cooperatives as an alternative to a strictly individualistic economic model to bring up whole communities from poverty, staving off the effects of marginalization and segregation. Co-ops have a long history among African and African diaspora people. Du Bois organized the Negro Cooperative Guild in 1918 to further the idea of cooperation among black people. And the guild encouraged the study of how to successfully employ co-ops, which actually grew into stores and other businesses, some of which exist even until today. Ujama is also about emphasizing self-reliance in our efforts to lift ourselves up as Black people. Self-reliance is not to shun the help of others, but it's to control the means by which we achieve that upliftment, a self-upliftment. Anyone, indeed, may help, 
but our efforts, ideas, goals, movements, projects, and any other means by which we advance must remain works of our own vision. No one will do it for us, and only we must determine how these things begin, move forward, and reach a successful conclusion. Ujama encourages an entrepreneurial spirit, as well as the support of Black-owned businesses. In the pursuit of those lofty goals and ideals, we must remember to keep our businesses competitive and appealing to our wants and needs in all aspects, so that our people will be eager to patronize them. This way, we all reap the benefits, while not forgetting the important element of generosity. Giving back to the community with our growing success is key in the principle of Ujamaa. Living the ideals of Ujamaa all year round will indeed give us a reason to celebrate each December. Happy Kwanzaa. Did you all see that? Mm -hmm. You did. Amen. So that was that was patience sharing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So now the next um, principle is the principle of uh, purpose, Nia. And it is my honor to present one of our elders, Lovely Billups, and longtime resident to present that principle. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to uh, participate in this really iconic um, program with us here in Tuckahoe. And to talk about the principle of purpose. And that principle says it encourages us to work within ourselves and to set personal to benefit the one and for the good of the community. This is a very important concept for us in this beautiful little village of Tuckahoe. And this is a very important time for us to focus on purpose. We are one of the three villages within the town of East Chester, Tuckahoe, Bronxville, and unincorporated East Chester. And in that light, it is Tuckahoe who has the richness of a diverse population. And how important that is that this community can benefit from the beauty of diversity. It is on the heart and in the soul of Tuckahoe to make it a purpose to, to absolutely celebrate of a diversity and not to allow it to become the instrument that makes us, that diminishes us. There are, there are synonyms for <coughs> It's the definition is to intend or plan. It is to do that alone or together. It is with the goal in mind, some goal in mind. Tuckahoe, those of us who are, and when I'm thinking about our African background, I think about all of the things that they have named us as a community. We have been colored, we have been black, we are brown, we right. are of color, right. we are, uh, and then some of those other words that don't do so well. Mm -hmm. And we have been all of that, and yet we have been able to keep on keeping on, and keeping on now means that our purpose is not to be the beneficiaries of cultural wealth, but to be the proponents of the beauty of who we are as a people. I'm so, I'm so, so, many, so concerned that we're not using what it is that we have. Our assets are so important to you. I'm asking that your per a part of your purpose is to understand how beautiful we are, how uh, the 
concepts of, of uh, Kwanzaa talk about fruit and flowers. And have you ever seen a, a garden that had only one set of flowers? That would be, have you been to, to um, botanical gardens? And we, are, we represent that, that concept of beauty and we have to be proud of it. And it means that we then are proud of ourselves. We are not sitting here waiting to be fed, welfare fed our integrity. We are a powerful and wonderful people. We are, many of us, the backbone of this little community. Um, one of my favorite uh, paintings, uh, I have a very large, I hope you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, thank you. Oh, God. Why did you get this? Purpose to make you go from that young man to this young man. That is purpose and dignity and focus and don't let anybody rob you of the idea that you need, that you are smart and that you're industrious and that you have purpose and focus. And I'm, some of these other words here, um, that you have initiative, that you have resolve, that you have desire, that you are distinctive, you, are, you have direction, you have aspiration, you have consistency. And go on. That's who we are. We have purpose. And when Amen. We our purpose, nobody can stop us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, our elder, lovely Billups. The next, the next principle is the principle Kwamba creativity and we will have Courtney Sanison and family presenting that principle. Courtney? Good afternoon. Can everyone hear afternoon. me? Good afternoon. Yes. So today we are going to be creating a Kanara using Ooh. popsicle sticks. This is an easy craft that can be recreated the popsicle sticks, if you do not have them and the colors that are needed, you can actually use a magic marker. I didn't have a black um, popsicle stick. The rest of them came already colored. I didn't have a black one, so I took the green one and I colored it black and it comes out just as nice as the others. I'm using a glue stick and also a glue gun. But if you use the younger kids, you can use a um, Elmer's glue or the glue stick if you don't want to use the So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the frame part first, which is there's um, four sticks across, two down the middle and two at the bottom, and I'm just going to glue them together. I'm going to actually glue them. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the sides. I don't know how I got unmuted. Sorry, I'm just gluing all the pieces together. Like I said before, this can be done with a glue gun or this can be done with Elmer's glue or you can use cement glue. Any type of glue that bonds things together can be used. 
So as I'm gluing the sticks together, I am going to read something about the sixth day of Kwanzaa. On the sixth day of Kwanzaa, which is usually celebrated Tuesday, December, well, this year be not Tuesday, well, just a celebrated December 31st, observers honor the sixth principle, which is Kuamba, which represents creativity. Kuamba is the commitment to being creative within the context of the national community. Vocation of restoring other pe our people to their traditional greatness and thus leaving our community more beneficial and beautiful than we inherited it. The principle has both a social and spiritual dimension and is deeply rooted in social and sacred teachings of African societies. In ancient Egypt, creativity was both an original act or imitation of the creator and a restorative act also reflective of the creator constantly pushing back the currents of chaos and decay and revitalizing and restoring the natural, spiritual, and cosmic energy of the world. This was a spiritual and ethical obligation to constantly renew and restore the great works, the legacy of the ancestors, and the create, creative energy of the leader of the nation. Kuamba, to do, to do always as much as we can in the way that we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. So our celebration of Kwanzaa today is a great way of introducing Kuamba to our community. As many have said before, this is the first time that this has been done in Tuckahoe. So this is a way to creatively introduce Kwanzaa to the Tuckahoe community. As I'm still gluing pieces together. So once you glue all your sticks together, you will have the bottom of your canara, which will look like this. So this is the stand. And what we will do is we will glue each stick to the stand and then we will light them based on the days that have passed. So I'm just gonna put some glue and glue each stick to the, I'm doing the three red on one side. And then the black stick will go in the middle. And then the green will go on the right side. And then once you finish gluing all of the sticks down, you will have, sorry, you will have a handmade Canara that will look like this. As an activity that you can use with your kids every day to celebrate Kwanzaa. So today we know is the first day of Kwanzaa. We will take one light. I have like printed out little light flames mm -hmm. and we will glue the light flame to the back of the candle and hopes that and then repeat what the principle is. You can take it a second step if you would like to, and you can write the actual principle, whichever Kwanzaa principle it is. You can write the principle along the red stick each time you go through it. And then at the end, your entire Kanara should have lights. I am not gonna put all the lights because we're actually gonna keep this in my house and we're gonna light it each day as Kwanzaa goes by. So we have a light, a little flame light for each day. And at the end of Kwanzaa, we will end up with our own Kanara with all the lights lit. Beautiful. If you guys have any um, questions about it or where to find the materials, you can email me or 
text message me. My information is on the flyer. But this is our Kenara. Very nice. Thank you. Awesome. For that was awesome, Courtney. That was Courtney. awesome. Thank that was what a awesome. wonderful way to introduce Amen. our children also to Kwanzaa and the principles of Kwanzaa. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. So our, our final, and if you guys notice, they are lighting the candles uh, at the church, at Shiloh Baptist Church, um, each time we have presented one of the principles. Um, I'm, we're going to do the final, the final uh, principle, and then I'd like to also acknowledge a few other people that entered the room. But the final principle, um, certainly not the least, is Imani, Faith, and that will be presented by Edward Stowe, Stowe Jr. and Eddie Stowe, his son. Edward Stowe and Eddie, you have to unmute if you are muted. Can they see us? Yes, we can see you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, it's a great honor to be presenting Imani, which is faith, which is actually the culmination of all the principles. Um, without faith, none of the others will be as powerful. Uh, discussing it with Eddie, and Eddie, can you say what Imani is? Uh, mom, family. Imani is? Mom, family, love, uh... History and believe yourself. Well, believe in yourself. Can you say that louder? Believe in yourself. And yeah. money is all about belief and faith and knowing things will happen. We've all faced those dark days where we didn't know how we were going to keep going, but we kept going. We woke up every morning and it's faith that we will wake up every morning. We don't have control of those. We don't have control of those, that's beyond us, and yet all of us can tap into the power of God. And faith without works is dead. You could believe, but if you don't know that something is going to happen, it's not as powerful. When you just know something's gonna happen, it has to happen, and it does. That is Imani. Um, the faith of our ancestors, not knowing what was awaiting them, but faith that they would pursue and one day we would achieve their goals that they would one day survive and surpass and succumb all of this from being brought here as forced laborers to the president of the United States and now vice president of the United States is incredible and only faith can get us there. Um, these seven candles as he's playing the drum. <laughs> These seven candles are an incredible, incredible way of representing what faith is. Abarigani. Abarigani. Imani. Imani. And I will hand it back to Karen. Thanks so much. All the presentations have been so wonderful. Thank you, uh, Amira. That finishes up with the portion with the seven principles, but we welcome the opportunity <clears throat> to share with you all and all the presenters. That was really wonderful. Like that. Um, you can unmute to applaud if you want. <laughs> oh my goodness, the lady from the economics, how scientific. It was awesome. We went to the continent and discussing that. All of you are absolutely wonderful. All of the children that participated in it. Um, Adrian, your grandchildren were wonderful. And it was just great and what a pleasure. So I turn it back to you, Amira. We're gonna move on to the part of the program. Um, love to everybody. Love Thank to you everybody. very much. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. I think um, I, I hope that you all were blessed by the seven principles being presented by, by families, by children, uh, just by everybody giving their insights into these principles, which I think 
for every single Kwanzaa celebration, it's probably different the way it's presented. So um, this is our little way of presenting it virtually here in Tuckahoe. Um, I would like to just the culmination of all the principles I think would be really beautiful if we had someone sing Lift Every Voice. So we're gonna have an area resident, Grace Flowers, sharing a rendition of Lift Every Voice with us. So if everyone could please mute so that we don't interrupt her. Thank you, Trustee Andino, for this invitation. And thank you for allowing me to be part of this extraordinary historic occasion of Kwanzaa and Tuckahoe. Amen. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song. Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song. Full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Sister Grace Flowers. Thank you. So one of the important aspects of most celebrations, including Kwanzaa, is the food. And we can't be together to share in the different um, foods that we would share in person. But we do have um, a video that someone has shared that I would like to share with you. Um, and it's a demonstration of Jolof rice. So it's Prince Davis, an area resident. He has a cooking demonstration of how he makes Jolof rice. The Davis family has been making this Nigerian favorite on special occasions, birthdays, and holidays for years. Jolof rice is known as a party rice and similar rep recipes are found throughout West Africa and in other countries. No significant African occasion would be complete without party rice making it a perfect go-to for Kwanzaa. So you can find this recipe by visiting Food and Company blog via the link. I'm going to put it in the chat, uh, but let's see if I can uh, get this shared. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? My name is Prince Davis, and I am here to do a small demonstration on how to make Nigerian jollof rice. So to begin, here are all the ingredients. One, you need to have four cups of well-washed rice. You wanna wash off all the starch from the rice. That is very, very important when making jollof rice because the last thing you want is very sticky rice. So this is four cups of uh, long grain rice. You can use pretty much any rice you want. Some recipes call for basmati rice, um, but uh, this is just uh, actually Carolina long grain white rice and it's four cups already washed. Then you need two uh, red bell peppers. You need four tomatoes. You need two red onions. Red onions are really, really critical in making jollof rice because of their flavor. 
one red onion you're going to use to make the uh, pepper paste, and the other uh, red onion, which I've already diced, you're going to use to, to saute. You also need uh, some bouillon cubes. These are chicken bouillon cubes. I've, I've crushed uh, one and a half. You can use one if you'd like. Um, I have some all-purpose seasoning here. Uh, I have three bay leaves, and I also have some. Uh, I have one tablespoon of dried thyme. I also have a can of tomato puree. Um, you're going to use about uh, a cup of that, and then I have half a cup of oil. These are all the ingredients to. Oh, and okay, mention the two Scotch bell peppers, also known as Jamaican hot peppers. So that's to start. So the first process is we have to make our pepper paste, which is gonna be cooked with the rice. So you just simply take a blender, you take the two red bell peppers that I showed you in the very beginning, you just put that in. Then you take your tomatoes, you put that in. These were the four tomatoes that we had cut up before. You put that in the blender. Then you take your onions, and you also put that in. Now I have a small blender, so I'm gonna be doing this in batches, but I just wanted to show you what goes in first. And then your two uh, scotch bonnet peppers also go in. All right, and then you wanna add a little water to facilitate the blending process. All right, you just wanna make sure that, you know, everything blends in pretty well. You gotta add a little bit more, okay. And then after that, you just, cap everything and as I said depending on the size of your blender you may have to do more than one blend. Okay. Now as I mentioned because I have a small blender I have to add the ingredients as I go along so it's your peppers, your onions and uh, again if you're like me where you have to simply pulse it to get it down into a thick smooth mixture and that's what you have to do. Let's add the last of the pepper and the last of the couple of pieces of onion. And you let that blend, let it blend pretty well. Okay, and there we have it. So you take the uh, rest of the diced onions that I showed you, and what you do is you begin to saute them. You saute the onions uh, in the half cup of oil, and you do so until the onions are translucent and a little soft in texture. And this is just about ready. Once they get to this point, you take your cup of tomato puree, and you add the tomato puree in with the sauteed onions. And then you put all of this together. You let all of it cook together, because what you do want to do is make it into a paste. You want it to cook down into a nice paste. And you know, when you cook the tomato puree, it takes the bitterness out. You know, tomato has, uh, tomato's very acidic. It's a very acidic fruit. And so you want to cook everything until uh, it all comes out and you just keep sauteing it until it becomes like a paste. Okay, now once your puree has cooked down, uh, as you can see it is now into a paste. It's okay if there's still a little bit of liquid left in, that's perfectly fine. So once this is cooked down, then what you want to do is you want to add the pepper puree that we made earlier today. You want to add that in. Add the whole thing, okay? And then you wanna stir it to get it into, you know, get into a good mix. You wanna mix the saute paste as well as the pepper puree together. You wanna give a good, good mix. Make sure that everything is mixed together very, very well, okay? All right. Now after you've gotten everything mixed in really, really well, now you're gonna add your spices. So you're gonna add your chicken bouillon, your crushed chicken bouillon that I mentioned to you before. You're gonna add your all-purpose seasoning. I'm gonna put that in. 
you're going to add your three bay leaves, and then you're going to add a tablespoon of dry hum. And then you're going to stir all of that in really, really well. Make sure that everything is stirred in very, very nicely. And then you're going to cover it with medium heat for 15 minutes. All right. Now we have our paste uh, that's been cooking for about a good 15 minutes. You can see here, everything is nice and nice together. All right. Now we have this. Now we have this already cooked. Now you're going to take your four cups of rice and you're just going to simply add it to the pot. All right, with everything else, just going to add all of the rice to the pot. Get it all down in there. And then you're going to stir the rice into the mixture. Try to do it very, very carefully if you can. Just stir it all in. and then I will show you the next step. All right, now as you can see, I've added all the rice. It's very evenly distributed into the pot. Now what you want to do is you want to take enough water just to cover the top of the rice with, okay? You want to add enough water just to cover the top of the rice. You don't need a lot, just enough, as I said, to cover the rice. And then we just stir the rice in again and make sure that the water is evenly distributed throughout the pot. And then, after you do that, you lower it, you, you put it on your low setting, on your, uh, on your stove, and then you cover it, and you let it cook for about 20 minutes. So after you've added enough water to cover the rice, as I mentioned, you stir it all in, you make sure that it is evenly distributed, and this is what your rice should look like once it's inside. You cover it. And then let it sit on a low flame for about 20 minutes. All right. All right. So it's been 20 minutes. Right here. Uh, so now what you want to do is give it another good stir from the bottom. All right. You want to make sure that it's all getting turned out evenly from the bottom. You want to turn everything over. Don't worry about the water. There is still plenty of water in here. Uh, the steam will continue cooking the rice. All right, so you just want to turn it over, make sure that the rice is getting a really, really good stir around. Go from the bottom and then up. And then after that, we're going to cover it again for another 20 minutes. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. Uh, we are now going to check the rice again, and we're going to give it another good stirring. All right, again, stirring from the bottom, going up. All right, so we want to make sure that the rice gets cooked all the way through. Do not worry. The rice will not be sticky. We're just turning it and getting, making sure that it's getting cooked all the way through. And then you're going to cover it for another 20 minutes. The entire process to make this rice is about an hour and 10 minutes long. And here we have it, our finished product of Nigerian jollof rice. Um, I hope you enjoy this recipe. It is an absolutely delicious recipe. I would add one note that if you are particular about level of spiciness, you can maybe put one uh, scotch bonnet pepper in as opposed to two. I like two because I like my rice to have a good kick. Happy Kwanzaa. Did everyone get to see that? Thank you. I thank you to the Davis family for sharing their recipe with us. I don't know about you guys. I haven't eaten lunch. I was getting a little hungry there. Um, I again want to ask you to please mute your phone, your Zoom, if you are not presenting, so that uh, we're not disturbing the program. So thank you all for, um, for taking part. I would like to recognize. Do you guys hear a an echo? Echo. Hmm. Not sure why that is. Not sure echo. Let's see here. Someone is unmuted. Yes, can someone? 
And someone mute. Everyone mute. Someone mute. Everyone mute. Okay, you guys are still hearing a mute, uh, an echo from me, right? Um, an echo. Still an echo? Yeah, it's still several people who haven't okay. muted. Okay, so I just, I'm going to mute everyone. And you can always unmute if you're going to present. Okay, I just ask that you not mute, unmute yourselves unless you're going to present. I would like to acknowledge a few people who, who have come on. I believe I saw the Reverend Pastor, Reverend uh, Michael Gerald on from, from the Shiloh Baptist Church. Are you there? I know I saw our Mayor Greg Luisi. Greg, are you with us? Unmute if you are and say hello. This is Reverend Gerald, hello. Hi, how are you? We just wanted to recognize and acknowledge you and honor you and say thank you for allowing us to use the church for a portion of, of the Kwanzaa celebration. If you want to just greet the group. Well, it's uh, a pleasure for uh, us to be able to participate in this uh, wonderful uh, first day of Kwanzaa. Uh, for those of you who celebrated and are active, we uh, we are honored to be um, uh, co-hosting or, in some capacity, serving in this uh, in this way. Uh, the principles of Kwanzaa are very meaningful to the empowerment of our community and our people. And um, over the many years that we've been in this country, um, and for the many years that we've been. Uh, around these celebratory opportunities. Uh, we uh, are happy that on this first occasion in Tuckahoe for the recognition of Kwanzaa, we are just blessed and privileged and highly honored to be uh, a part of this. And it is my prayer that um, those of us who are on this call uh, might uh, fully embrace and fully um, keep in mind these principles as they can help um, help us uh, level up, help us move to uh, different spaces in, in our lives and help us come together and coalesce, coalesce as people uh, and move towards uh, the goal of, of, of being more unified and to bring more community opportunities for our people. So thank you again uh, for the vision and thank you for uh, making this uh, part of our uh, 2020 uh, especially in, in light of this pandemic, we, uh, we are just overjoyed uh, by this uh, awesome opportunity. So thank you. Amen, thank you. I would also like to um, acknowledge our county legislator, Damon Marr. Mr. Andino, thank you for having me. It's such a privilege uh, and, and honor to be at this historic event and, uh, and so glad to be here with you and, and uh, Mayor Greg and Trustee Lee, I see. I think I saw Commissioner DeMarco uh, on here. Um, of course, uh, Reverend Gerald, and now my uh, collaborator in county government, Deputy Commissioner of Corrections, uh, Michael Gerald. It's a, that's a tremendous thing to hear. Um, and also some of my friends there, uh, Elder Lovely Billups, who did a, a lovely job, of course. And uh, see Mr. St veteran, Mr. Stowe, distinguished veteran, and Nancy. Uh, height and my friend Leslie Gaskin. Um, just the, the ideals are so beautiful. Um, the children and and the elders so beautiful that we we've, we've seen today. And I you know I can't wait till next year when we can ho hopefully uh, we can get together in person and and share this way. Um, especially with the food in person, I think that would be that would be terrific. Yeah. Amen. It looked um, great. And th thank you. And thank you. Thank you for acknowledging. Me. And I know that um, our county executive, George Latimer, was with us earlier. Are you still with us, George? If yep. you could greet the group. Myra, I've, listened I've listened to every minute of the program. It's been wonderful. And uh, as Damon said, next year we'll be together, not yes. just to enjoy the food, but to enjoy each other's company. And uh, this has been a real blessing, this program. Amen. Thank you for joining us and for taking time out of your schedules to do so. Um, so as we near the end of our program, 
I am hoping that BB Kent is with us. BB, are you on? I believe I am. Amen. 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 So, BB Kent, um, I would like to introduce you, and it's really my honor to have yet another one of our elders join us. Uh, she will present a cultural storytelling and close out the celebration. BB is a spirit led journey teller for 30 years. She does cultural and biblical portrayals in prisons, school systems, churches, and homes. She's born in New Rochelle and attended the Christian, the Christ, I'm sorry, she attended the King's Christian College. Um, I also have some additional information here. Um, I don't want to miss anything. BB <laughs> is, uh, is Swahili, is, please, please, you, you say it because I'm going to mess it up. Um, what I'll, I'll let her um, give you more information because <laughs> if I start messing up these pronunciations, I won't be happy. So please welcome Bibi Kent. Thank you, Bibi, for joining us all the way from Maryland. I'm Maryland. in Maryland now. I live in Maryland. Uh -huh. So thank you. It's all yours, Bibi. Asante Sana. Hujambo! Hujambo, Gina Lakonati, BB Kent. Hujambo, Hujambo, Gina Lakonani, BB Kent. I say hello to you all, young and older. My name is BB Kent, and I have spoken and introduced to many of you the wonderful language of Kiswahili, which is spoken on the eastern coast of Africa, the second largest continent in the world after Asia. And here we are. It happens we're here on the first day of Kwanzaa. In 1966, uh, Maulana, which means master, Karenga, a professor at the university uh, in California, Long Beach, Southern California, uh, African studies professor. He and his students in 66 introduced America, but more importantly, to the people, the African American who have their ancestry and their roots in Africa. And he, because of the turbulent setting that was going on in the 60s, poor housing for then called the colored people, uh, the, the jobs that they had, uh, the medical attention, and the police brutality. Does that sound a little bit familiar to some of you? Well, he and his students got together in 1966 and said, this has got to stop. The riots in Watts has got to come to an end. And so they got together, chose number seven, I understand you've already been introduced to the uh, Mishima Saba, the candles, but I'm just going to highlight for a moment the symbols, because if anyone wishes to celebrate, recognize Kwanzaa, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, they must be introduced to the seven symbols. The Mishima Saba, the candles are just but one of those symbols. So let's start the journey. I am a journey teller. I am also a storyteller. When I tell journeys, they are true. When I tell stories, it is when I have made those uh, uh, concepts and that story with some significance, I have made it on my own. So and it is a pleasure for me to be with the community there in Takapon. Well, we start off with this first symbol. Uh, it may already be there. It's about two weeks now. It is called the Impeka. Yeah. The Impeka is the mat. And when someone is setting the table, getting ready to prepare to celebrate Kwanzaa, and it's open to everyone, but it is primarily for the African American who has been called everything. But now, today, they have an air of pride. You must have the mat, which represents Africa, the homeland. That goes on the table first. On top of the MKK, which is what the mat is called, 
you have the Kinara. The Kinara is the candle holder in the Jewish faith. It is called the Minara. But here in Kwanzaa, it is called the Kinara. When Maulana Karenga started with his students to introduce the world to Kwanzaa, he added a third A because the number seven was significant to him and it is also in other faiths. When he added that third A, the pronunciation correctly for Kwanzaa really is Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. So we are now celebrating and being introduced to Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa means first or first fruits, but to distinguish it from uh, that word, that terminology to the holiday, the pronunciation is Kwanzaa. Well, we've been introduced to the Mkeka, which is the map representing the homeland. On top of the Mkeka is the candle holder, which of course, as you see here, it is holding the candles. But the Kinara candle holder represents the pain and the suffering that my people went through when they were kidnapped from Africa and brought to America. The diaspora, they went to the Caribbean islands and then they went to North America. So the Kinara remem uh, uh, reminds us of the pain and suffering. Why is I here? from the homeland to the diaspora. Now, we have the Mishima Saba, which you've already been introduced to. They are seven candles. Mishima means candle, Saba means seven. So I have it here, all of the Mishima Saba lit. This is the way that the candle, the setting would look on January 1st. Kwanzaa starts on December 26th and it goes to January 1st. So this is like at the end of the seven days and all of the candles are lit. But however, when it starts, and I'll just give you one example, on December 26th, which is today, the only candle that would be lit is the black one in the middle. So when you went to someone's house and they're getting ready to celebrate, the question or the greeting that you would say is Habari Ghani, Habari Ghani. And it means what's the news? What is the news? What are we going to discuss on this day, the 26th, the first day of Kwanzaa? And it would mean Umoja, Umoja, unity. And on that day, that's all that would be taught. Children would tell you what they feel about um, uh, unity. The elders who would be seated on either side, they would tell you about unity. And then the parents would discuss unity. But it is a day of discussion for that one thought. I'll give you one more example. On the last day, which is represented in front of us, the uh, principle the in Guza Saba, the principle is faith, Imani. Imani, Amani means friend. Imani in Kiswahili is faith. So it would look like this and the people, the children would hear, the elders would speak what faith means. And faith means how we got over. We're still here. That is what it means to all of us who have this, this ancestry and brother Maulana, which happens to mean master, 
That was what he was aiming for to remind us that with despite the, the Watts rioting and all of the difficulties that were happening in the 60s and prior to that, he said, stop, stop, remember, remember your roots. Remember who we come from, nations there, Mali, Timbuktu, Sungai, Ghana. And this is what they were aiming to have us to remember so that we could act decently and in order. So this is the way the symbols would look on the last day. Also, everything touches the mat. So on the fourth day, we have the Kakombe Cha Umoja. And the Kakombe Cha Umoja, which is filled with water, would be used for two purposes. Because it is the unity cup, Kikombe Cha Umoja. You hear the emoji again, which is what's unity at the beginning. This cup would be passed around to everyone. If you had 30 people in your living room, and that has happened to me, where they, this procedure, the ceremony was being done, everyone must touch this cup and it'd be passed from one person, touch, pass, touch, pass, touch, pass, until it comes back to the host. If there's a baby there, you would put this cup near that baby's hand so that there would be absolute unity. That is the purpose of the Kakombe Cha Umoja Plus, for the remembrance of the ancestors. But we might not have time for that. But let's continue. The cup also touches the mat. So we have the mat, the mkeka, we have the candle holder, the kinara, we have the mishuma saba. Oh, let me tell you about them. The mishuma saba in the kinara represents how we have gotten over. These candles light up and explode to the heaven, no matter, no matter how we've been treated, no matter what persecution, pr police brutality or what, we are still here. And these candles bring it out clearly before everyone because they're lit every single candle. Then we have the Kakonde Chakra motion. After that, for the fifth, Vabunzi or Muhindi, corn. The corn represents whoever the host is, and I am in that position now. I have three children. So this represents the future. My children, my offspring, my, my grandchildren. And so here they are. And since I have three children, three children, three ears of corn are placed on the Mkeka. After the Mkeka, we have uh, the fruit, mazao. So we have that basket is represented. In Africa now, there is a harvesting period going on. They don't know about Kwanzaa uh, unless somebody there has heard about it because it is an African-American celebration. It is not a religious celebration, but it is spiritual. It's spiritual. That's how we get over. So we're showing this representation of the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and what have you. That also touches, oops, pardon me, the foundation, touches the foundation. So since the mazao represents the harvesting that's going on, another connection to the motherland, last but by no means least, gifts. Gifts are given to children. Each day they may got, get one, or at the end, at the last day, which is January 1st. I have a book here, which is the perfect book, by the way, to be given to children to celebrate and inform them of our past. I have a book here, The History of Black America by Dr. Howard O. Lindsay. So now tell me, where do you think the book goes? Touches the Mkeka. Just a touch, but it's recognizing the information inside has come from the motherland. So now you know, to a degree, the significance of the symbols. 
Because if there are no symbols, there's no Mishima Saba. That's just one of the symbols. So I've gone through them and I'll do it quickly one more time. The mat, the Mkeka. The Kinara, the candle holder, pain and suffering. We have the Mishima Saba. We have the Kitombe Cha Umoja. We have the Babunzi or Muhindi, the corn for the future. We have the Mazao, which is the fruits, representing the fruits and, and harvesting that's going on now. And then last, the Zawadi, that's what I need to remind you. Uh, the name of the gift, gifts that are given, it's called Zawadi. You would not get, in other words, a computer for Kwanzaa. It must have a cultural connection to our homeland and to our existence, significance, and pride. That is rehearsing and introducing to some of you the symbols of Kwanzaa, since I know you have already gone over the principles. The Kakombe Cha Umoja, I want to just mention a little too, would be used for another component of Kwanzaa when people who have passed are remembered. There's water in here, that's why the plant is here. And I would then ask people, is there someone in your life that you want to remember? And someone would call from where they're sitting in my living room. And if they said, whether dead or alive, if someone said Malcolm X, I would then hold up the cup, put libation in the plant, and the response would be ashe, which is another way of almost saying amen. And one by one, people would call out someone to be remembered. I would repeat the name, water droplets or libation would be put in the plant, and we all would say ashe. At the end of the names that are being suggested, I will then ask for all of us to collectively say ashe for people who have been remembered. Just to introduce that thought, uh, that thought to you, and that's why the Kikombe Cha Umoja has a greater significance in the celebration. Now, after the, uh, um, the ceremony of remembrance has been done, then we all will stand up, all in my living room, wherever they are, in the auditorium. I would introduce them to this word, Harambe. Because this is the conclusion of, of Kwanzaa. And it is done on January 1st. We don't say Harambe each and every day. It will be done primarily on the last day, January 1st. So I would have my people who are in my living room, lights are down, fireplace is going. I'm trying to give you an atmosphere. And then we'd all stand up, children all. And we would take our arms and put it to our side. This is somewhat the conclusion. And we would say, how many times do you think we would say it? Seven, Seven times. times. Seven times. So we would say it six times. And what it is, is this. With our, our elbows are tucked into our side. We would say, haram. Now we would do that six times. But when we get to the seventh time, mm, put our arms next to our, our side, and we will say, Harambay, for the last time. So for those of you who want to participate with me, fine. Yeah. I'm going to do it. So here we go. Harambay. That's one. Harambay. 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 Four. Haram. Um, That's five. Haram. Haram That's six. Now here we go. Haram. Haram Thank you. All clap. Thank you. Be so happy. That's you, what brother. we would do. And then we would have the feast, eating the food, playing the music, hugging each other, because we would have the feast called the Karamu. I hope I have enlightened some of you. Thank you. So a little bit more about Kwanzaa. It's for everyone, but it's for us. Thank Asante you. Asante sana. Asante sana.
Thank you very much, Bibi Kent. Thank you. And since we cannot celebrate with a feast because we're not together, <laughs> we can celebrate with a feast of song. So I really want to, to thank everyone who participated in this program. I want to thank all of the volunteers. I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to call them out again for their, their support and their help and the collective work that we did. Patience Rojas Taylor, Cassie Savage, Adrian Stiles, Courtney Saniston, Cynthia Gallishaw, and Car Minister Karen Stowe Stiles. Thank you so much for all that you contributed to this program. I would like to introduce you to Minister Charlene Lambrecht, who from Covenant Life Christian Ministries, who will close us out in song. Happy Kwanzaa, everyone. Please enjoy the rest of your week. Amen. Amen. Ha, amen. What a great, awesome program. I just want to take knowledge how much I feel honored and privileged to be a part of the program. Um, I'm a native of Tuckahoe. I haven't lived in the village for about 30 years, but when people say, where are you from? I say Tuckahoe. Amen. So I'm just so honored to have been asked to participate. Amen. Um, and I struggled a little bit about what we were going to do while sing or, or whatever. And it just was confirmed when we were talking about Iman in the last principle, which talks about our faith. So this song is a real simple song, and I'm pretty sure that you all have heard it um, before. And it simply states, we've come this far by faith. Amen. Come on in. So I just want to ask that everyone, please let us show our respect by muting our phones. Um, Please mute your phones. Thank you, Darlene. This love by faith, on the Lord, trusting in His holy word, He never fails. We have a cry. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for sharing your sister, Kathy. Terrific program. Thank you for enlightening me. Amen. Amen. I also want to give a special thank you to Charlene and to Grace for sharing in song with us. We really appreciated it. Thank you so much. So everyone, enjoy the rest of your week. Happy Kwanzaa. Today is the first day we did a mini little presentation, mm -hmm. and we hope that next year we will be able to share in, in person. I would love for the, for the uh, Shiloh Avenue that, that you guys to unmute and say goodbye to everyone. Mm -hmm. Unmute. Awesome. Bye, all the participants. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. It was a wonderful program. Asante Sana. Asante Sana. Asante Sana. Yes. Asante Thank Sana, you. everyone. Thank you. Asante First Sana. time Thank with Tucker Thank you, everyone. Thank you.